Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. We're going to be speaking with Kelsey Ramsden. She's joining us here from Mind Cure Health Incorporated, a leader in technology and research in psychedelics. She's joining us to discuss the Desire Project. It's focused on the treatment of hypoactive sexual desires disorder with MDMA. She's also going to talk a bit about tackling mental health care for women. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Kelsey Ramsden. Thank you for taking the time this morning. Oh, thank you for having me. Great honor to be here. Well, I did mention to our listeners that you're joining us here from Mind Cure Health Incorporated. Give us a bit of your professional background and talk about your role at Mind Cure. Sure. So I my coming into this company was really a lot of uh, luck and fate. And so I was twice named Canada's top female entrepreneur for scaling businesses. And I come into this work actually having been a patient of psychedelic assisted psychotherapy and designing and dis, uh, deciding to sell my previous businesses and devote my entire attention to the vision of how we can do better research, how we can deploy technology to arm this kind of psychedelic revolution and, and build a team to scale that out. So I'm the CEO and uh, co-founder of MindCure. And really come into this work, like I say, to, to help divine, design a vision for what we can do with respect to psychedelics and, and build the team to do that. So it's an exciting time. I know a lot of people hear about psychedelics and they think, is that legal? And I just want to assure everyone that we're talking about clinical research here and we're not talking about what we might have done in college. Well, you know, when you mention psychedelics, there's a mental vision, as you say, that we that we get uh, what we did in college, uh, the psychedelic 60s, you know, I'm going to date myself yeah. just a bit there uh, and <laughs> asking the question of, of whether or not they are legal, obviously not for recreational use. But we have heard much about research over the past couple of decades about psychedelics as they um, can help with mental health uh, issues, PTSD. Is that what you've always been involved in, or is this something that interested you based on an entrepreneurial desire to, to build a team to move a certain product? Yeah, so for me, it's really the entrepreneurial desire. Mm -hmm. I've been staying appraised of the research for my own personal reasons. You know, I think a lot of us have been touched within our families or personally with whether it's depression, PTSD, anxiety, addiction, you know, um, and for me, the idea of of the capital markets coming together to support the research, and this is really, I think, the the pivotal piece around why psychedelics were hiding for a period of time. It was not only like you mentioned the psychedelic 60s and and um, some of the regulatory frameworks, and a lot of these researchers were in fact punished in their careers for continuing to pursue research with psychedelics, but based on their good work and their, you know, their resilience continuing to do it, the research started to show and support that things like psilocybin, formerly known as magic mushrooms or LSD, MDMA, were showing promise in clinical research. And, and so as an entrepreneur, looking at that and saying, how do we fund this research in a way that will allow it to scale exponentially as opposed to kind of waiting on grants and doing this in the dark? And the market came together. So what we've seen over the last, I'd say, 18 months is a tremendous amount of interest in advancing these care modalities, not just because it's psychedelics and, you know, it's kind of got a sexy title and that kind of thing, but predominantly because of that research and what's coming out of it. Um, and so to your point about PTSD, you might have seen on the cover of the New York Times an article that uh, showcased the phase three PTSD these studies coming out showing 67% cure rate. That means people no longer reaching the threshold for a PTSD diagnosis after a three month treatment series utilizing MDMA assisted psychotherapy. And those numbers are tremendous, outstanding. So when I think, um, when we look culturally at what we can do with psychedelic medicine, um, and if we're able to kind of, you know, down regulate our old baggage and look at how we can apply this to clinical practice, there's a lot of great hope. And I think a lot of lives can be changed. You know, uh, specifically, what is 
MDMA. Is it a is it a derivative of mushrooms? Is it uh, synthetic? And how is it related to your desire project? Yeah, so MDMA is a synthetic mm -hmm. and would have otherwise been known to some of us in the olden days as ecstasy or molly. Okay. Um, so what, what MDMA does, though, when we think about it in clinical practice is it, it floods the brain with um, serotonin. And it's actually interesting in that it, it's one of the few that has serotonin and dopamine tagged together. So I'm not going to geek out on the sides actually too much because that's a rabbit hole. But but what it does do for individuals is it downgrades what we call the default mode network. So that's like our fight or flight mechanism. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes when people deal with challenging experiences, whether it's PTSD or our desire project, when we're talking about lack of sexual desire, and I'll tell you a bit more about that in a second. It's really hard to get past our ego. And I don't mean ego like a big headed person walking in the room. I mean, ego in terms of what we, what we naturally do as a species to protect ourselves, you know, which is try to avoid it. Even when we're trying to address it, we try to place blame. We try to, you know, um, ignore, we try to make sense of it. And so when we're utilizing MDMA assisted psychotherapy, so that's taking MDMA in the clinic with the therapist and doing a, a session of work. We're able to access, um, it's almost like watching a movie where we're taking our self out of it and observing the situations, challenges, obstacles, ourselves within it in a way that kind of takes the sting out of the blame and the shame and all of these kind of things. So we're able to do the harder work more quickly and get it really the root of a thing. And so why we think this can work for HSDD or hypoactive sexual desire disorder is because a lot of women who suffer, and just briefly, it's 14% of premenopausal women. So that's about nine and a half women and million women in the state wow. are lacking sexual desire. And that's not because they don't have affection towards their partners or want to want it. It is oftentimes because of a more deeper root cause that can look like a history of sexual trauma or negative past sexual experience or um, you know, negative self-opinion, uh, lack of kind of confidence in self that erodes that the way that they show up in relationship. Um, and so we believe that, that MDMA with psychotherapy can help in the same way it helped with the PTSD folks to allow women to look at what's informing their inability to feel desire and, also, a small asterisk I, I want to note for the listeners, desire is something that it can be alone. You know, it can be thoughts of fantasy. It doesn't, we're not talking about, you know, actually involving in physical activity. Mm -hmm. We're talking about everything that leads up to that. And so without all of that, kind of the transactional nature, the latter part, is really difficult to get at. And, and so a lot of fellows that I speak to say, so when she says it's not you, it's me, she, she could mean that. And so, yeah, actually, that can be very true uh, for a lot of women and uh, can be very challenging. How challenging have you found it to cut through the fear of uh, mm -hmm. taking psychoactive medication itself uh, in addition to the fear or trauma that you are going to attempt to uh, address? Yeah, that is a great question. I think there's this, this part in all of our lives where the pain of staying in the thing um, is outweighed kind of by this notion of confronting something that's unknown. And when we, when we utilize these psychoactive substances in what I would call the controlled container, so we're in a therapist's office with people who are trained to work with these medicines, and we also have a shift in culture around story. So there are people who've gone before us who can say, you know, in my case, I'm a 44-year-old mother of three who was, like you, trepidatious, but who, through doing this work, basically did 10 years of therapy in three months' time. Wow. And I know because I did 10 years of therapy before that. So 
So part of it is this idea that like data move will move the science and story will move the culture. And so I think for people who are nervous about it, this idea of you are safe, these are these medicines will be clinically approved and the people who administer them will be well trained. And there are many people who've gone before you who are not at the fringes, who are typical, you know, Tuesday afternoon kind of people just like myself, who are really looking at getting to the root as opposed to just treating the symptoms. Well, with nine and a half million premenopausal women dealing with uh, hypoaptic sexual desire disorder, where can our listeners find more information about psychedelics as they battle their own mental health uh, condition or their own issue with desire? Great. So I'm going to give three resources. One is we have a great podcast that explores a number of different psychedelic medicines so where we're thinking about addiction and ibogaine, we're thinking about major depressive disorder and psilocybin. So it's called Mind Curious. You can just Google that. It's on Spotify, it's on Apple, it's all those places. And, and that's a good walkthrough, kind of a 101 on these different kind of things. The second thing is you can go to our website if you're interested in the Desire Project and understanding more about it or potentially getting on our newsletter that'll help Keep you informed if you would like to be considered as a participant in the study. And so that's mindcure.com. And then the final thing is, you know, you can always reach out to me. I think it's important to be accessible and to be involved in the conversation as culture evolves. So I'm generally, you know, you can find me on Instagram at Kelsey Ramsden, um, or you can just send through the contact form on the website if you have any other questions about what we're doing with the Desire Project or anything with respect to mind care. Well, I appreciate you joining us here this morning on Health Professional Radio. Kelsey, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Well, thanks for having me. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Kelsey Ramsden, CEO of Mind Cure Health Incorporated. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.